What is up everybody, Night Batman here with another movie review and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, Blade Runner 2049. Now this movie is a sequel to the original movie Blade Runner by directed by Ridley Scott. This movie came out a long time ago and the story of the movie took place in 2019 whereas Blade Runner 2049, the sequel directed by Denis Villeneuve, I think I said that right? takes place 30 years later in the future and is following a whole new story uh, specifically around our new Blade Runner uh, called K. I'm not really like a long time fan of the original movie. I actually just saw it recently, uh, you know, just to kind of get familiar with it in order to like, you know, know what's happening before seeing the sequel. And when I saw it, I actually really liked it. I thought it was a really good film and it made me wish that I had, I had seen it even sooner. One of my friends actually suggested it to me and I wish that I had seen it as soon as he suggested it. But right now I have to say that the original Blade Runner was a really good movie I thought it had really good ideas and really good themes and Blade Runner 2049 I am, I am so happy to say does not disappoint in those areas now our new Blade Runner played by Ryan Gosling is conducting an investigation Which is something that could really drastically change the perception of all humans and replicants and uh, Just basically things that could really change uh, the world and I don't want to talk too much about this the plot for this movie because I think that the plot is one of the strongest parts of this movie to let you know right now this is gonna be a strictly non-spoiler review now I'm sorry there are probably people who have seen it and want to you know hear a review that involves spoilers but I'll try to do my best to really talk about what I loved about this movie without spoiling for those who haven't seen it definitely the story is one of the strongest points of this movie the story is that simple but when you really break it down though it it uh it really is very multi-layered and by that I mean you have so many things going on you have uh the return of Deckard from the original Blade Runner, who was played, of course, by Harrison Ford, and uh, you have the story of K, who I can't really talk too much about his backstory because honestly, the trailers never even talk too much about K. So what I liked is how they kept a lot of this under wraps. They kept a lot of this main story under wraps. They kept a lot of their backstories under wraps. So that actually really provided more surprises as you're watching the movie. I won't talk too much about them, even like minor things about them that. Because uh, basically if it hasn't been revealed in the trailers, I don't want to ruin it for you guys So all I'll say is that what I like about these characters and especially this movie is that first of all This is one long movie. This movie is actually 163 minutes. That's a pretty long movie It's already pretty close to running a three-hour mark and some movies are like, you know Usually long movies round out at about three two hours and 30 minutes But uh, this is actually longer than that it can have a little slow moments But what I actually liked about this movie is that even though we have some of these slow moments where the story kind of like moves even slower but it's more like character moments where you can see that their own like personal arcs their story arcs are kind of progressing whereas the main plot does kind of take a break but it's it's nice to see these character arcs kind of expand more like um the arc regarding k or deckard and you know it's it really makes you get more attached to these characters and what i like is of course when you know this is a movie about replicants who are bioengineered humans you can actually feel a little more attached to them because you know when you look at the film a lot of the main characters let, I, I can't really say exactly, I can't talk too much about the whole replicant situation, about who in this movie actually is human and who isn't, but all I'll say is that, you know, with how many hu actual humans there are and how many replicants, or even just, um, like, well, there's one character close to K that I won't really divulge too much about it because I don't even think the trailers really show too much of her or her backstory. So I'll again leave that to you when the sh when the movie explains that. But what I like is how we kind of see our uh, like K's personal relationship. And I what I actually like is how you actually care about the relationship. You care about these two characters. This character named Joy, who is actually very close to K, uh, relate, uh, like romantically, you really care about these two characters. And even though she doesn't really provide that big of a um, uh, relevance to the story, what I like is that she is a big relevance to um, K himself. Again, like I said, when the when the story kind of slows down and you really ha like take time to just spend time with these characters and see what their life is like because even K doesn't really have like a really good life. You can tell that like in just the first maybe 15, 20 minutes, you can tell that this guy's really alone and it's he only really has joy to fall back on and you know you it makes you care more about the relationship and really uh, care about joy and K and really hoping for the best for these two and that's what I like is that even though you have this whole investigation that uh, K is looking further into, you kind of really get uh, <clears throat> like concerned about what's going to happen to Joy and K. This movie is so beautifully shot. I love the cinematography so much. I love the colors most especially. Just the way everything is shot, the way the future 
future looks and how overpopulated everything is. You know, there's like building after building after building. There's barely any empty spots other than like the main streets. And uh, in, it makes, it really gives like a grand epic, but kind of almost claustrophobic feel when you look at the future, which I like because it kind of really throws back again to the original Blade Runner. This film does a great job of like it, like it feels like it stands on its own, but when you really watch it, I like how there are some really good throwbacks to the original. Like there are even some scenes like cut right from that original Blade Runner film and brought into this sequel. And it really merged very well. And it, it kind of makes you nostalgic when you actually see it. And like when I when I saw the some of those clips or those audio files from the original Blade Runner in this film, I was like, wow, this is, this is a good sequel. I love how they managed to pay respect to the original story-wise and aesthetic-wise. They brought back those foot that, that footage or those audio footage and uh, they used it in some of the, the like really well done moments in the movie and that really helped progress the film and the characters as well. Harrison Ford coming back as a Deckard, he didn't really get a lot of lines and surprisingly he didn't even get a lot of screen time then I actually thought he was going to be in the movie for more than half of it but uh, I'm sorry to say and I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler so like for the next five seconds this is a spoiler starting right now. Deckard is only in the movie for about the last quarter of the film. Okay, so end of spoiler, all right? So uh, let's just say that's how much to screen time you'll see of Deckard. And other than that, when he is on screen, he, you know, Harrison Ford still has a, like, he still got his good, his great acting uh, pulling through. He brings, you can see like a weathered and very aged Deckard who's a little more in like, you know, his own, on his own and he's trying to survive and uh it's it's cool to see that they're still continuing this character even though when you're watching this film you can really see how the focus is really on k it still feels like it's still k's story it's just that k kind of helps further deckard's story from the last movie which is it's it's nice to see how those two stories kind of complement each other you know again ryan gosling he's a really great actor he's the driving force of this film he's what moves it forward all the way through and i just i love what he did in this in this film and his acting in this film was so great and so gritty. I loved it. And, you know, I just, I, I really want to see where they go from here. When I was watching the film, I, it felt like the ending kind of gave hint to maybe there could be a sequel or it could just end right here. Like, but, you know, as for K's story, it really did feel like his overall character story is like fully told in this film. So whether or not they use him in a third, we'll see. Because again, I don't know that ending, the, the ending for where it could go from there, it's, we'll see. Like, I, I think they could work a way of continuing it further. But if they end Blade Runner right here at 2049, I think it's fine. But, you know, for me, it felt like some parts of it were a little unanswered. Like, there could be more that I hope they tell in the next movie, which I really hope they do. Because there are some ideas they can, that they have really set up that I want to see uh, go further. Because, like I said, there is a plot here that can kind of change the world. So, I want to see what kind of effects that will have when it becomes public, you know. Neander Wallace, played by Jared Leto, who is the main antagonist of the film. Uh, he, man, Jared Leto, of course, he's a great actor. I thought he was actually pretty good in Suicide Squad as the Joker. Makes me sad that he got a lot of cut footage and I really wanted to see what he, what else he brought to that role. But in this film of Blade Runner 2049, he does a great job of playing this, this character who feels like he's learned so much from the history of the world and, you know, trying to kind of justify where he's going with replicants and uh, what he intends to do and what he hopes to bring for the future. But I kind of feel like they... We didn't get a whole lot with him. He is mostly there to kind of, um, he has his agenda, but uh, it doesn't really feel like we don't really see him fail. It just, again, it followed more of Kay and Deckard at the end. It's kind of hard to explain without spoiling the film, but all I can say is that he is in the film, not a big substantial amount, but he is kind of like that 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 force behind the scenes that kind of pushes things forward it's mostly his um his replicant love who uh kind of he sends as like his own personal muscle to kind of get the job done and love is also like a really really good foil to k almost and i won't really say again they're like what is that one thing they those two share in common but, um, you know, I like how it kind of separates them. And when they actually come into conflict, it really makes things really intense and really awesome to see. And, you know, the tension is really gripping, really good. Again, Jared Leto, uh, I just feel like his character of Wallace, you know, who's like 
head of the Wallace Corporation, which is like the next big corporation after the Tyrell Corporation, who was making the replicants in the last movie. Uh, I feel like, again, yeah, they it looks like they didn't really end his story either. Like, it feels like he could be used as a, as a setup for the next film. So that's where I kind of see the story is like, I, I feel like I, I do feel like I wish we got a little more... Like, because again, K kind of got his ending, but it feels like we didn't really get an ending for the other characters. Like, they're, they're purposefully a little more open-ended for the next movie. So, like, you know, we'll see where it goes. I hope we do get a, a Blade Runner, uh, a third Blade Runner. That would make a really good trilogy, especially if it's directed by this director. I just want to see where else it goes from there. The music by Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Wolfitch. Benjamin Wolfitch actually did the score for It, the the remake or, you know, the official movie that came out this year just a few this uh last month i believe uh last month yeah last month and he did a great job in that film and i think that him and hans zimmer are a great duo for this film what i love most when uh when i was watching this film i don't know if it was musical because i downloaded the score but i haven't listened to everything whenever you're in los angeles especially in like the high-rise building area or like the main district man you can really get a feeling that these tall buildings feel like giant titans because when you hear the score there's like this really strong bass that echoes throughout the theater and it just it makes these buildings feel more uh, you know dominant and like they're such a, a big object that takes up almost all the space on screen so you know it's nice to see how the the music complements what you see on film and also again of course the the emotions and uh, it, you can hear some music that kind of have nice throwbacks to the original. If you even look at just the soundtrack listening, you can see, I think there was one track that's like titled after a line from the film. So you can already tell that that scene, uh, the music in that first movie is going to be the same as in this movie. And yeah, they do bring some, they try to bring some themes back from the original and kind of make it their own. And you know, that's what I like when you watch this, it really does feel like a Blade Runner film, but very modernized. And I really like it, but it still feels like it didn't, uh, it tries to still keep the aesthetic, the, you know, the oversized advertisements of holograms and everything still bringing back and try not to, not to progress things a little too much where it's like, it could realistically be like, you know, the technology from 2019 could have been uh, advanced a little bit in 2049. So I thought that was really good because some movies when, you know, you have a sequel and sometimes you see how the future is in one film and then the sequel, it's almost lo like really advanced. But to be honest, if you look at the real world, you know, we can't make advancements that ha that quickly, that fat and that far in such a short amount of time. So that's what I like is that for this fictional future, it kind of felt like it was a natural progression. So I really like that. I really love this movie. I love the story. I really want to see it again. What I liked about Blade Runner, the original was it was like a very noir crime detective kind of film and it that's the same feeling for this film but it just felt a little more like character driven and there was more emotional weight and a little bit more of a plot than the original but again i think that the only thing uh back to the slower movement pace moments i can see that being maybe a problem for people who want a faster paced movie or maybe a shorter movie that might hurt for them but for me personally i thought every single moment helped it every beat everything everything just helped flow perfectly and but other than that i just wish that there was a little more in hints or like kind of explanation on where we'll go with Wallace or even with Deckard because again that ending was it felt like a cliffhanger but it kind of felt like it brought us to one point and either we can end it on that point or we can take it further in the third that's just my little gripe I mean we'll see where it goes I would hate it if we don't get a third one because it does feel like there is enough material that they could try and work on for a third movie I have got to give this movie a four out of five I I want to bring it a little higher but again because there's things are a little too open-ended and you know I, I really want to see first where it goes um, but other than that, if you just look at the movie where it is, uh, just as is, then it's still a good movie. It's still something you can enjoy uh, and you have great actors. You have a great director. I love the director's film Arrival. I kind of want to see his other film Sicario, which is, I think, an assassin film. And I saw the trailer and it looks really interesting. So I want to try and check that out. But he did a great job on Blade Runner 2049. And this movie isn't really doing well box office wise, but I hope that they still manage to do a third one because Neither did the first movie do so well in the box office from what I heard. And, you know, 
it wasn't until the final cut how many versions later where people really fell in love with it and you know myself included i'm glad i saw that final cut first and you know that made me love the movie and want to go into this one as well so um you know if we get a third i think it's going to be a great trilogy especially if you have this director back blade runner 2049 i think if you guys have the chance you should check it out in theaters otherwise you can always wait until it comes out on blu-ray or 4k or whatever but just definitely give it a shot you might like it especially if you love the original blade runner this is a really good film you guys have got to go check out if you have seen the film please feel free to share your thoughts and comments in the comments below and i'll check it out maybe what are your favorite scenes what are your favorite moments uh maybe please if you're gonna talk about spoilers kind of leave a spoiler tag so whoever sees it doesn't spoil or get spoiled from it so uh i'll be definitely sharing my thoughts about it my favorite scenes anything with k i thought he was a great great character and especially his action scenes you know the action wasn't intense but when the action was happening it was good it was really really good there were or the action scenes were intense but there just weren't too many they were kind of space but i love the action and i love the whole crime and whole detective you know like investigating stuff it's uh, everything about the movie is just so good good story good acting good action uh good music good cinematography it's just a beautiful movie and it just it's just like one of those reasons why i love movies movies in general so you guys should definitely give it a shot and i hope you guys enjoy it as well as i did so thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed blade runner 2049 now in theaters go check it out and thank you for watching and take care later